we can start with uh, with JC's question. Um, that kind of rolls into everything. So he said, um, are there plans to update the white paper with the changes in the past few months? All the centralized info seems a little bit stale. Uh, yeah, so there we are currently, you know, kind of getting all the information together. And the first plan is to have it kind of put out into a Medium article or kind of like a Gitbook docs so people can, can see it, um, you know, in kind of a, a central area and kind of digest it. But yeah, I do, you know, I do want to have the official white paper updated with the new information. So um, no ETA on it yet, but it's definitely in the works. So yeah, I guess, um, you know, until I, you know, I can just kind of roll through the announcement um, and the general project plans. And then if, if, you know, if anybody has questions, they can, if they can feel free to post them and, you know, we'll answer the best we can. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the kind of the biggest thing is the token relaunch. So, you know, we had obviously, you know, the the price has been just kind of steadily on a decline, and uh, you know, a part of that is due to the space just kind of declining as a whole. Um, and you know, the you know the other part is just you know like the market sentiment um, on a macro level has been poor. You know, obviously, we're in a bear market, but. Um, we have been in talks with a new exchange. Can't say the name yet. Um, we're waiting to do an official co co marketing launch with them. Um, so they, you know, we're kind of like holding off on the official name. I, some of you know who it is, but um, we've been in talks with them for a few weeks now, and we really like the team. Super, you know, down to earth, very pleasant to work with. Um, you know, they're all doxed. so. We are going to be relaunching on their exchange, um, and you know we feel that you know being, you know, we kind of have a, a small fish team kind of you know I kind of feel, um, being that we had launched with Trader Joe, and the, you know, originally they don't really give us a whole lot. Um, you know, they host our liquidity, that's great, but as far as any kind of co-marketing or you know any kind of partnership or anything like that, they don't really offer a whole lot. So. The, the thought was, you know, let's partner up with a new exchange that's up and coming. That's a, it's a great team. Um, you know, we talk with the, with the founders, on, you know, on the daily. So, um, you know, we're going to be launching a farm on their exchange as well. And it's only one of, I think there's maybe what, eight farms on there. So, you know, we'll be on the front page, which is nice. Um, and, you know, the cool part with the farm is that we're going to be, implementing the price stabilizer, which is it kind of leads to the next point. Um, you know, we, we talked a lot about the price stabilization. Um, we kind of went back and forth on it. And ultimately, we feel that, you know, the goal with this whole new project kind of transition is to get to a point where your nodes or your volcanoes are you know, they're utility NFTs and they're also kind of your ticket to a portion of the revenue of the project. That's always, you know, the plan has always been to get to that phase three, right? Um, but the initial plan was contingent on, you know, a very, you know, contingent on a market that was in an uptrend, I guess you could say. So, you know, we've had to pivot a bit. And I think, you know, as a team, we feel like this is the best way forward is to, use this opportunity with the partnership with the new DEX and stabilizing the token price so people can get back their ROI. We're trying to use this as kind of the bridge to get to the end goal, which is, you know, all the nodes are just revenue share and, you know, kind of try to eliminate the Ponzi to the best we can, to the best degree that we can. Um, so, I mean, that is, kind of the gist of it. Um, as far as the revenue share goes, we, <coughs> the, the current revenue is coming from the different farms that we're in, in the, you know, from the treasury, we've been in, you know, farms like Dex Finance, we've been in Gains Network. Um, we've set up several different trading bots that are doing outstanding actually. Um, and, um, you know, that's just kind of the, like the way that we're growing 
the treasury internally and then externally we have our sister projects which you know they've been doing i would say the the, uh, the one that's had the most growth has been athena for sure uh, i know people have asked about the other ones that were in the white paper like flora and moneta and those are they've kind of been scrapped at this point i would say because they just you know from a business perspective they weren't worth going down and 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 developing so it was you know purely a business decision there they were still cool ideas but it you know it makes more sense to go with something that we feel the market um you know will appreciate more so one of the the biggest things that I'm excited about is um, one that we're calling Project Iris, which is kind of a DeFi automation tool. And obviously there's gonna be a lot more coming out about it um, as we develop it, but we've just hired a designer for, you know, to kind of build the platform out. We've hired a few front end devs to, you know, to kind of take those designs and bring them to life. Bart has been, you know, He's been working on Athena, which kind of ties into that as well. His API is going to be is going to kind of tie into that. Um, we have a second backend dev that is going to be doing the majority of the of the development for the backend side of it. And you know that's a um, that's a project that I'm probably most excited about. I think it has a lot of potential. And there's a third one that has been discussed over the past um, I would say like the past few days and we um that is i can't say a whole lot about it because we kind of want to wait until it's ready to present but i think that one also has a lot of potential so um you know there's definitely a lot in the works to bring you know additional revenue and to bring actual products to the market that we can you know that we can pay out our our holders in so um just kind of going down the announcement as far as the reward updates um i mean i know hopefully everyone has read it at this point but the idea is obviously like i said before to get the nodes to the revenue share point and because that completely eliminates the you know the constant cycling of the rewards and trying to find ways to you know to eat up the rewards without selling like it's a whole you know, it's a game that was fun when it was exploding, but now it's time to come to reality and be able to give people consistent and growing rewards instead of constantly declining rewards. So, I mean, because I know me personally, I would rather, you know, even though even though it might start out as a small share at first, if it's, you know, if it's a project that is growing and increasing their, you know, their revenue over time, like a real business, um, I would rather be a part of that versus something that, you know, I'm constantly concerned is just declining um, or is so heavily dependent on new users coming in that, you know, it's almost kind of an anxiety like, okay, well, I just got to keep, keep claiming daily or I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to get my money back. So the, uh, you know, in the spirit of that, we want to, you know, after you've gotten your ROI back from whatever you spent on your, on your, your node, that node will then transition to just a revenue share. And um, we're still finalizing the um, the exact numbers for, for, you know, for how we're going to handle the compounded nodes, because we do want people that believe in the project and have been compounding. We want to take care of them first. And, uh, you know, nothing against people that want to take profits. I, I totally understand it. But for those of you that believe in us as a team and as a, as a protocol, and have just been compounding and growing your your stack. We want to take care of you first. So yeah, I mean, the idea is, you know, like I said, to get to that end goal. And I think while it may be, you know, it may be small rewards up front, it's still getting to that end point. So, but yeah, I mean, I'm, my mouth is starting to get dry. I feel like I've been talking a lot. Um, do any of you guys want to add anything while I get a drink of water? Yeah, go grab yourself a glass. So um, Universal King has just asked, can we still create nodes? So yeah, absolutely, you still create nodes. Um, we're not sort of fully transitioning over to phase three at this point. We just sort of taking the step in that direction by 
by relaunching on on this new dex um so but yeah ev everything is still in play you can still create nodes it's just we're going to be stabilizing the price for you guys so you've got consistent rewards um obviously with that sort of comes consistent node fees as well so you know you, you know exactly what you guys are going to be paying that was sort of one of the sort of criticisms we you know we tried to approach it so that we had these dynamic node fees um, so that we, were, we weren't constantly having to change the prices as the, as the price was moving. Um, the issue with that, obviously, is that people are paying node fees for the month, and then by the end of that month, the, the price has gone down even further. So you can have a consistent, right. consistent price now, which, which means you can have consistent fees, you can have consistent rewards, but you can absolutely still mint nodes. Um, as you said, we haven't sort of ironed out all of the specifics with to, with regards to how we're going to reward the people who've been compounding versus the people that've been claiming. Uh, but we will be getting an, another announcement out in the next few days to a week or so with all of those specifics in it as well. Um, it's also any tentative date for the launch? Not as not as yet. We're looking at sometime next week, but that's. Yeah, that's not set in stone at this point, but we're, we're hoping to get it done next week. Um, so, love my cast asking, what happens once we reach our ROI? Does the node still generate 50% or it fully turns into an NFT? So, at this point, we're, we're looking at when you've ROI'd on your node, we're going to switch over to um, to phase three for those nodes so that you're, you're going to get a share of the treasury revenue at that point so we need to move away from the sort of ponzi nomic model of continuing to hand out lava awards so effectively think of it as you're sort of investing um in almost like a hedge fund scenario i guess so you're investing your money into into nodes to to build, help build the treasury and in return then we're going to give you your money back and once you've got your money back then you, you're just going to get perpetual income effectively from the treasury. So that's the sort of model we're looking at with this transition. Uh, just reading the next question. Okay, so me is just asking about how we're going to reward the people that bought in early at the start when the price was high. Because um, even if we have the sort of stabilized... speak to that. Um... Yeah, sure. You go. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, Larry. I I I read it and I, I just had some thoughts. Um, but yeah, I don't want to I don't want to cut you off. Oh, sorry. I thought you were taking that one. Um, yeah. I mean, we've we sort of discussed that as well. How we're going to reward the people that that noted up high at the start. I mean, we're not going to sort of leave you guys hanging. That's that's for sure. So don't worry about that. But I I totally get where you're coming from there, and it's sort of. Unfortunately, the the price is where it's at. Um, if we didn't introduce the price stabilization, the chances are it's going to just drop even further. So we're going to stabilize it at that point, and we are looking at some sort of compensation, I guess, for the people that that noted up early at that sort of price. But we totally get what you're saying. But um, we need to make the transition over to to phase three as you know as early as we possibly can in order to to sustain the the protocol and ultimately that was the that was the vision of the start from the start was to transition over to phase three and move away from the the ponzi nomic model yeah and you know i, I really I, I feel for you Ev, especially those that you know that bought in close to launch and that have been kind of supporting us the whole time i, I can really empathize that you know i i recognize the you know taking two years to get your roi you know it's it's rough and you know we are we've been handling it on a case-by-case -case basis at this point and we do want to you know to do what we can to help you guys out and to compensate um so that's a you know that's kind of where i'll leave that um i'll just to add uh briefly uh, or to, to address me as question briefly one of the things that we were you know talking about is um you know making it so that the revenue share doesn't only kick in once you're, you're you know once you have your ROI um, you know in terms of lava but you know you're still getting a portion of the ROI as you're um, 
you know, as you're trying to, you, you're still getting a portion of the revenue share as you're trying to, you know, to reach your ROI. And if we do something like that, um, where, you know, you're still getting lava, but you're also getting the revenue share simultaneously, then one thing we might be able to do is, you know, maybe give a larger percentage of the revenue share to people who, you know, minted at a higher price or who purchased at a higher price, because that makes you know, more sense if you, because it's really the price that you bought at, um, you know, in an effort to get them to the, to their break even point more quickly. Um, and, you know, if, if our product, as our projects, you know, scale up and, you know, revenue increases, then it becomes, um, it becomes, it makes a lot more sense to do something like that. But, you know, that's, that's something that we're considering and, um, you know, that should definitely bring you to your break even point, um, you know, far before two years. Um, but yeah. 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 Very well said. Um, to answer DJ's cord, um, his question, uh, he said, when a node stops producing lava rewards and becomes a revenue share, how do node fees work? Um, so I'm assuming you're talking about the maintenance fees. Yeah, so it'll be essentially the same. It'll be a percentage um, of, of what you would make. So it's not like you're going to have to pay, you know, if, if you're making less through, rev through the revenue share than you would through, you know, through earning the lava tokens, we're not going to make you pay the, you know, the alternative price. Um, you know, that just wouldn't be fair. So it'll still be a percentage. Um, McPie, Crypto Freak, said uh, ROI as in lava dollar value when we created the nodes or for whitelist people <coughs> or for whitelist people the money spent during pre-sale. Um, I'm not, if I'm understanding right, you're asking if, if it's an ROI in tokens or if it's an ROI in dollar value. And to that, it would be an ROI in dollar value. Um, for the whitelist, that's something that we've been discussing because, you know, a lot of, of whitelist people have already hit their ROI and, um, you know, we have to adjust their, um, you know, their nodes, their node ROI points down. You know, our initial plan or not plan, but our initial, um, you know, the, the concept of being able to, to choose to, to buy at a point and choose your, the point where you node up as your ROI point. Um, in hindsight, you know, it was, it was a decision that would have made sense in a, you know, a raging bull market, but it, you know, in this case, it's essentially just, you know, you just locked in, you know, oh, I'm sorry about that. Mute this. Um, you essentially just locked in, you know, how many X's of profit for, you know, for, for nothing in a way. So, and while we, we, you know, we would love to be able to pay out everyone at the point that they noted up at but it doesn't, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be harmful to the project. So we're going to be going through and seeing, you know, when people purchase their lava at versus when they noted up at and, you know, kind of making adjustments accordingly, which we feel is the fairest, you know, because the idea is to get your ROI back. It's not, you know, because, oh, you waited and you noted up higher. Um, you know, now you get to, to 2x while someone else is, is sitting there and, you know, they're waiting for, for a year. So in an effort to kind of to spread everything even and to be fair, you know, we're going to be adjusting that. So, Chaos uh, said, does Lava own the sister projects or is Lava an investor in the sister projects? I would say, um, I mean, we are an investor to, how do I, we're an investor to the degree that we are funding them. Um, although I believe it, it would be more along the lines of like a subsidiary. Uh, where we do, you know, still have kind of an umbrella ownership of the projects, yeah. and you know, a portion. So, so, so What's that? these projects, uh, what I was saying is, we'd be incubating these projects, providing them with funding, you know, establishing a team to actually run them and get them off the ground. But they would have complete right. autonomy. Lava wouldn't really have um, significant uh, control over them because they'd be run by their own independent team, managing their own finances. You know, running their own promotions, managing their own communities, etc. Um, so they'd be very independent, but we, you know, we'd be getting uh, what's essentially a, a you know perpetual royalty from the revenue um, with each project because you don't want to take if, if you know if a project is generating you know let's say a hundred thousand dollars a month you don't want to take all of that you want some of that to be you know put back into the project so that it can continue to grow 
and you know and allocate that money as they see fit and what essentially we would be doing is taking somewhere along the lines of a 50 to 20 percent uh royalty for all revenue that the project would generate so that would be going directly back to our treasury a portion of that would be reinvested on our side and and another portion of that would be going going back directly to the community as part of the payouts on the you know on the actual dashboard yeah exactly so yeah so we'll be doing the setup and you know and the hiring of the team and then you know once that's established yeah like already said they you know they'll kind of have their own control of the project and then we'll just be getting our cut for the for the lava protocol um uh mia asks how many nodes are active meaning paying their fees that is something i can find that information out um we have a dashboard that has that i don't have that information you know off offhand right now i just um, um i just had a quick look so i mean just crunching some rough numbers i'd say it's between sort of 85 and 90 percent of people uh are, pay, are actively paying their fees right now so it's around you know nine out of ten people roughly Okay, so that puts us at about maybe 1,300 Novas, which really is not that much, if you think about it. 1,300 um, is is a fairly low amount compared to some of the projects that are in the tens to hundreds of thousands, so um, that's pretty encouraging. Uh, let's see, I bought my whitelist entry in a Discord auction for a, a number I was just taking into consideration. Yeah, so there... Um, for the people that bought in, there have been a few of, of you guys that bought in, um, and that bought your whitelist through, you know, through the auction, and um, you know they've reached out, and you know it's kind of a tough situation because we want to be able to, you know, like we want to make it fair for everyone. You know, you 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 bought in at a time when you know things were exploding, and you know the markets have fallen across the board. And, you know, it's, it's tough because, you know, a lot of people, you know, their investments go down. Um, now, that being said, we, you know, we can kind of look into it on a case by case basis and see what we can do to compensate um, for those of you that have bought in, you know, that kind of bought your whitelist spot as well on top of investing in the whitelist. So, um Let's see, given that an LMS not only stabilizes price, but also builds the treasury fund, would we be looking to increase the price range in, say, one month or so? Um, so the LMS, I'm, I'm not sure I would say it, it builds. I mean, it builds the treasury in the sense that if new buyers come in, yeah, that's that, you know, it goes to, uh, you know, I, I think Accord puts a portion to the, the liquidity management contract and a portion of the treasury. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, that's still reliant on new capital coming in to pay out other members. So uh, as far as increasing the price range, we don't have any plans to at the moment. I mean, if if uh, if we can support it, then I'm not opposed to kind of giving it a bump up to, you know, to kind of a higher range, um, because that just means that people will be able to get their ROI faster that are still, you know, are still waiting um, and selling, but um, you know the, the downside of, of of kind of pushing it to a higher price is that it's you know the higher that we push it and stabilize it, the shorter our runway is um, for people to be able to you know to kind of get their ROI back before they transition to the revenue share. So we're keeping a very close eye on it, um, you know, to kind of make sure that we are going to have enough liquidity and you know if the time comes we'll make the decisions that we have to so uh fee based on percent revenue share is better determined on the month before once revenue is generated for the previous month then we pay percent of that on the next month as maintenance if we pay fee at the start of the month we might over under pay at revenue is not determined yet yeah 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 I, I i think i understand what you're saying um and yeah yeah we'll make sure that that that's a um that you're not paying for a percentage that you didn't earn, essentially. On the new decks with Lava, will it still, will it still be paired with USDC or will it switch to AVAX? So we're actually going to be pairing it with USDC. Uh, we'll be we'll be um, swapping our USDC.E 
to USDC um, <coughs> just because the liquidity has shifted quite a bit. It's I believe there's about two or three times the liquidity of USDC now. Um, but yeah, we do want to keep it paired with a stable coin. Um, definitely don't want it to be paired with, with AVAX. Um, just to avoid, you know, it's a very turbulent market right now. It, we're we're kind of not sure if, if we're going to be going up or down. So, um, and also, you know, with the farm that we're launching on the new DEX, that was one of the, the kind of the main features of it is because we're going to have a stable price and we're paired with a stable coin, you essentially have a farm that's going to yield uh, in the in the realm of 50%, I believe, um, APR. And, but that's going to be with no permanent loss. So, yeah, that's something I'm pretty excited about. Yeah, I don't know. Um, if anyone, if anybody wants to come up to the stage and and talk, hang out. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to to raise your hand. Um, we'll love to talk with some of you guys. But if we don't have any further questions, we can start to wrap it up. Um, I know I was just talking with uh, with Larry a little bit earlier today. Something that we want to start is. Uh, essentially doing weekly updates. So we're going to have, you know, like a weekly kind of community AMA slash project update because, you know, I feel that we have not been active enough in, in keeping you guys up to speed on what the project is doing. So that's one area that I, I really want to push, you know, to keep you guys in the loop, what's been going on, um, you know, let you, answer, um, let you ask questions about, you know, the sister projects or whatever. Um, and then, you know, like after the, you know, after that, we can, we can do some, you know, some games night kind of thing or something. I kind of miss that, uh, you know, I miss the beans essentially. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I miss the beans, man. <laughs> there, oh, Var said there will, so there is, is there a product, a service or product you guys plan on providing as an extra revenue stream? Yeah. So um, actually all three sister projects fall into that category. So I would say Athena and Iris fall under the product category and the third one would fall under a service. Um, so yeah, that's kind of been the, that's why we have the big push to get to, to a revenue share because we, you know, we're hoping that these actual products and services that we're going to be building out are going to be what drives the protocol forward instead of constantly trying to, you know, just keep the Ponzi rolling. So, um, Beans and carts, man. Oh my God, the carts. I forget. Yeah. Oh yeah. We got to get that going again. Um, a weekly short summary or announcement will be good as not many can join the AMA. Yeah, I mean, we'll definitely record the AMAs, um, like the weekly ones, that, you know, and, and have them posted on YouTube that same night. But um, yeah, I think, you know, like a short medium summary as well. Uh, for those that just want to take a few minutes and then see what's going on, that's something we can definitely put into place. Uh, might be a dumb question. Does compounding count towards your ROI? So yes, it does. Uh, the percentage right now is 5%, but we're going to be adjusting that. Um, we're still kind of running the numbers on that to get, you know, to figure out like a number that's fair and that makes sense. Um, but, you know, it's, 5% in, in hindsight, you know, it's it's a bit low because that means that you can essentially buy one node and compound 20 out of it, um, which is, you know, it's it's a bit insane. So um, we're just going to be adjusting it to a, to a, you know, to a number that makes more sense. That's all. Um, I think the weekly beans, yeah, is, yeah, man, I'm, I, I'm really excited to, to push that forward. Um, I miss the beans in the cards. Do you guys have an estimate on the node cap? Um, like an estimate on what, on when it will happen or like, um, yeah, so both. Um, we have a kind of a rough gauge. I mean, it's about in the, the like the 2000 range on the Novas. Um, but, that, you know, that number is also dependent on, you know, on where we get with the sister projects in that time. Because the idea is to, you know, to not dilute the value of the, of the revenue share that each node is, is granted. So, um, now just because we set a cap does not mean that it's going to be kind of, you know, okay, they're done forever. Like we were kind of thinking of, of having it be more of an event sort of, um, sort of situation where, 
you know, it's like, okay, the protocol is doing good. The revenue is pumping for people that want to get in, you know, we'll open up minting for X amount of nodes during this time or something like that. Uh, that was one idea that we were kind of thrown around. So, um, looks like we got, Oh, uh, there have been so many changes in the protocol without the community's participation through voting discussions are being made in the general chat by the community, but decisions are not. Is this going to change at some point, perhaps after the turbulent times are gone? Yeah, so that's that's definitely one area that I will say that we have been sl that, you know we kind of slacked on and can do more with is using the G Lava to allow the community to you know to to vote and whatnot. I will say that governance as as a whole and the kind of and the DAO structure, you know, it definitely has its flaws in the sense that you know the community can. You know, like people can vote for what's in their best interest and maybe what isn't in the best interest of the protocol. So and I, I know, we, you know, we, there's been several examples um, with other projects where, you know, people put forward a proposal and it was pushed, even though it, it was extremely harmful. So um, we've just kind of been taking. Yeah, like, like Dan said, we've kind of just been taking the decisions um, as a team at the moment. But I do think that there is value in getting you know, in using the G-Lava as your proof of, you know, of node ownership and using that to get community sentiment um, and take that into our, you know, our decision making and, and take it into consideration. So, um, but as far as allowing the community to make the, the full decisions, I don't believe that that is the best option. Um, Smudge said it's been worryingly quiet. I'm really pleased to hear this update. Some exciting changes, particularly with the upcoming DEX change. I'm a little concerned there is too many sister projects and strategies. Are there priorities with these projects? Yes. So Athena and Iris are the are the priority, I would say. Um, the third one is one that we just kind of came up with that is actually something that we could get rolled out fairly quickly. Um, but, you know, I do hear that, you know, like we don't want to spread ourselves too thin to the point where we can't actually deliver on these products. So... Yeah, definitely focusing on Athena and Iris at the moment. Um, and, you know, we're going to be hiring as needed to support the, the, the for, you know, the future projects. And I'll tell you what, it feels good to see Dan back in the yellow text. <laughs> I miss the, uh, I miss the lava mascot. Everything was, it was too red. Did, uh, Larry, Ari, did you guys want to add anything? Did you have any, uh, any future stuff to, or not future stuff? Any uh, any comments or anything? Uh, I think we cover everything pretty pretty well. Um, you know, I would just say you know keep an eye out for you know upcoming announcements for the sister projects. Um, we'll probably have you know an, a an AMA for each one of those where we dive into the specifics of each one. Um, you know how we'll how we'll go about. Fundraising, how the projects will be managed, etc. Um, so you know, make sure to keep your notifications on, and um, you know, stay tuned. Yeah, hundred percent. Well said. Um, kind of just wanted to get a you know, for those that are listening, what can you throw in chat? What would be the best kind of like day and time for everyone? Or you know, maybe it's best to do a poll. I'm curious, you know, like just for those that are here. Um, you know, like is, is beginning of the week better, end of the week, earlier in the day, later in the day, Sunday fun day? I kind of like it. You know, I don't want to schedule for the, you know, if, if people aren't going to be available on the, on the, all right, Sunday fun day. Yeah, we can, I can throw up a vote as well. Um, you know, let everyone have some time to vote on it. But yes, yeah, Sunday sounds good. Um, is there an estimate in months in the first Sister project coming online? Yeah, so the first one will probably be Athena. Um, Bard has been making a lot of headway with uh, with the front end dev team that we that we recently hired. So you should start to see some uh, you know some screenshots and such in chat um, fairly soon, I would say. Um, and, you know, like once it's at a point where we can start doing testing, we'll definitely be looking to the community um, 
to, to give that a trial run. mouth is super dry. I think a more relaxed regular AMA rather than a huge big AMA and that's probably better putting the community back up. Yeah, I, I agree. I think um, I think the Sunday fun day is kind of perfect. If we can just, you know, we can play some games. <coughs> we, we can kind of start it off with a general like update, what's been going on, where we're at with different areas of the project, and then just lead right into some into some games and and whatnot. I agree. The chill AMAs are definitely the way to go. Doesn't have to be a, you know, a stuffy format. And I won that one game of beans too. I came in first, and I didn't get paid. So I don't know, guys. I'm still I'm still waiting on my. Uh, I think Calvin owes me a hundred bucks or something. <laughs> oh man. As long as the vaccine guy is here. <laughs> uh, oh my God, what was his name? Dude, he took so it's much money from us. It's Pfizer. Pfizer, okay. yeah, Pfizer Zero. Oh my God. Where's he at? Let me ping him. <laughs> I think he just practiced beans all day. <laughs> oh, he's got it. He's got to be on like some pro beans team or something. Dude, it's insane. He like, it was broken. Um, do you suggest to keep compounding or claim to reach our ROI? So, Basically, the way it's going to, you know, the general idea for it is you can either claim and get your ROI back and then, your, you know, your nodes will stop emitting and you'll have less revenue share. Or you can compound and use up the, you know, the available amount of emissions to compound that you can to grow your revenue share before they, you know, they expire. So, um it's 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 really up to you if you if you want a, a higher percentage of you know of the project essentially and you want to keep growing your nodes and compound if you just want to you know get your money back and hold on to a smaller percentage then you know you can claim but um, I don't want to make a, a recommendation either way but I will say you know that we do plan on on capping it like I said at some point so. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Pfizer paid for his entire whitelist spot um, from his beans rewards. I'm pretty sure he, <laughs> he has been – he got a free ride. You know what? He deserves it. I'm just going to compound. I want to reach that 20. Yeah, man, 100%. Uh, yeah, and to, to add on to that, um, we are going to be removing the, the cap since it doesn't – you know, um, for those that want to – you know, that want to keep collecting and grow their share – you know, we feel it doesn't make sense to kind of keep that um, that restriction of having to make a new wallet and all that. Um, it just kind of adds more friction to the whole system. So, you know, being able to to you know to have your nodes and you know the plan is to you know to have them be able to be tradable by the time we implement the node cap. And we we have shifted from the original uh, idea, which was to have a you know, like a node marketplace on our DAP where you could trade it in lava. Um, ultimately, you know, it, that kind of, um, it, it kind of, what's the word? Compacts, not compacts. It, it, it kind of restricts the, the, like the visibility of the project and the, and the NFTs to our little community. So we feel it's better to, you know, to allow them to be tradable. And so you can, you know, you can post it on any of your, you know, of the standard NFT marketplaces, so we feel like that's a better uh, a better choice overall. Can you re-answer, <laughs> Bates? You are always supporting us, dude. You are a legend, but I'm afraid I cannot support you in re-answering all the questions. Um, are we, is no fusion going to be implemented? Yes. Node Fusion is something that unfortunately ended up taking a, a backseat, um, but we have, you know, it's kind of been brought back to the forefront now, and we're trying to figure out the best way to do it. The way that the contracts are written are that you essentially buy a Fusion NFT, and you kind of burn that NFT to use your nodes together. Um, we're just, we're kind of going back and forth to, to decide if that's the best method. Um, because it, it, you know, it adds the NFT, like the idea was to, was for the fusion NFTs to be able to be sold, but you know, I don't know if 
there's going to be that much demand for the, you know, to buy and sell them as much as it is people just wanting to fuse their nose together. So it might make more sense to, you know, just to have it be a front end, um, a front end deal where you, you know, you have to buy your lava or whatever we end up, end up deciding is the fee for fusing. And then, you know, you pay it, your nodes fuse together and, and that's it. So, because, you know, when you add the NFTs into the mix, it kind of increases the, the gas cost and whatnot. So I know it's minimal on AVAX, but still, if it's, a, if it's not necessary, then, you know, we'll, we're not going to push it through. Are the boost NFTs going to get the boost with revenue share? Yes, that is one of the, um, you know, that's kind of kind of translate over. And we're trying to think of other ways to to give value to those holders because there really aren't that many that were minted. I believe we're only at about maybe 45 total between all three tiers. So, um, you know, the initial plan was to roll out, uh, I believe it was around 300. So it's something that for those that have them, you know, it's like we want to give as much value as we can and potentially, you know, maybe sell a couple more in the future if, you know, if people would be interested. But, um, you know, I, I really like the design of the NFTs and I think that we can do more to give them extra utility and value. Um, so I ROI, I think, don't shoot me. I saw where the price is going. Hey, man, no, no, you know, got to do what you got to do. It's all good. If I compound into new nodes now and don't sell my current stack, will I still get lava on the compounded nodes? Let me just make sure. If I compound now into new nodes and don't sell my current stack, will I still get lava on the compounded nodes? So, oh, okay. So that is something that we're, um, we've, we've been kind of running the numbers on, on how to deal with the compounded nodes, because, you know, when you compound the, you know, the node gets generated at the current price. So, there are some people that have compounded when the price was high. So they've locked in multiple nodes that, that might have, you know, several thousands of dollars of, of ROI in, in, in their ROI value, but they've only actually spent, you know, maybe, you know, a thousand, fifteen hundred in the project. So it, it's really unhealthy for the project for you to be able to, to claim, you know, 10 X worth what you like, what you put in, um, when that's just, you know, it's not sustainable. So we are, you know, we're, we're still trying to figure out the best way to go about adjusting that. That's fair for everybody. So will it be possible to name the compounded nodes? Yes. Yeah. That's a, that should be a pretty easy, um, <coughs> a pretty easy fix for Eugene to, to implement on the front end. I would say that's, that's lower on the priority list, but Tricky as that encourages me to sell, but I get it. Yeah, it's it's tough. It's a tough situation. Um, you know, the the tough part is that we started the project in a in, in a different market, and now we're trying to do our best to appease and to you know to make to um, to make whole and, and to be fair to people that bought in, you know, at the beginning, and also take into consideration what is best for the project as a whole. Um, you know, there had been like, we, we went back and forth on, you know, for weeks on how to handle it best. You know, other projects have just kind of shut down and distributed their treasury. Um, people, you know, and, and you, you're left with 50% ROI or, or, or whatever, and that's it. Um, we didn't want to do that. We, we want to keep on pushing the project forward, even if it means making some hard decisions, you know, during this bear market. Um, but you know, it's, it's tough. It was a tough decision, but we feel like this is the best way forward is to get off of the Ponzi model, grow the sister projects, bring in more revenue. And I, and hopefully long-term, you know, your nodes will have some serious value and be able to give you actual passive income, like a dividend. Like it's like buying a, you know, a stock that pays you a dividend, except ideally much higher. So, uh, how do you ROI already? I'm not even close to ROI. <laughs> uh, I mean, if you if you've been selling daily, like, hey man, it's up to you. Um, but I mean, I get it. There was a lot of fear in the market, um, and you know, I I'll be the first to admit that we weren't as active as you know, as a team as we could have been. And I'll tell you what, that's something that's going to change going forward. 
um, you know, I don't blame you guys for, for, you know, for being concerned about where the project was headed, but, um, you know, there were, uh, there were a lot of reasons for that. Um, some of which were out of our control, you know, team members had some personal issues and some of which was in our control. We just kind of, you know, we didn't, we didn't iterate fast enough on certain things and, um, you know, but we, but, you know, we're learning as a team and we've made some, you know, internal structural changes. Um, you know, we've kind of brought in some new management tools and stuff that we're, tr that we're using that has helped with getting things rolled out faster and with really pushing forward. So, um, I am very optimistic about the future of the project and, you know, I'm excited to kind of start things to start things up again and, um, I keep rolling forward. So. Is it possible to add a feature to see how close the node is to ROI, like a progress bar? Yeah, so you can actually see that now. So um, <coughs> if you go to your, you know, on the dashboard, if you go to the show all section, you can see the individual, um, you can see how much you, like the ROI value of the node, and then you can see how much that node has been claimed so far. In, and that's in dollar value. I understand the recent announcement. You guys have proven your dedication to the project and that you are here for the long. Hey, man, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, projects that, you know, they've been dropping left and right. It's, it's, uh, it's been rough, but, um, you know, the goal of Lava has always been, um, you know, to be, you know, we, we kind of, we stick with the theme of the volcano, right? So a volcano, you know, as it erupts, it creates new, you know, it creates new land, you know, like the lava solidifies and you have new land, new projects. So that was kind of the theme. And we're really trying to hammer into that and to roll forward with that theme in mind. Um, all right, Dan, take it easy, man. Where's the guy that's saying Aleph is... <laughs> Yeah, um, pairing Mia said pairing lava to USDC instead of AVAX is a power move. Yeah, we never. It was always um, the, like that was always the plan because the risk of pairing to AVAX just wasn't worth it. You know, we much rather be paired with USDC. Um, so yeah, and I know I forget who said it. It may have been, um, it may have, I think it was Bates who said it, but. The fact that you know there haven't been that many nodes created actually is going to work in our favor, um, because as the you know as the sister projects grow, it means that you know everyone's going to have a higher share. So, um, yeah, dude, it's a it's a shame what happened with with Aleph or Aleph. Um, I don't want to you know I'm not going to speak ill on a project. Um, I was. It, it was a funny story. I was actually um, one of the, the the marketing guys there. Um, him and I are, are, you know, we we came from a different project. We were pretty good friends, um, and you know, he he wasn't involved like in the in the core core team. I would say he was, you know, because uh, he like you know him and I talked and like we had some some words to say. But it's it's tough. I mean, I can understand where they came from because they had their Aleph mode, right? So they had to, you know, they had these people that locked up for, I think it was 56 days or something. It was like almost two months. And, you know, looking at the numbers of how fast the money was leaving the LP, you know, those people would have gotten back nothing. So I can understand why they made the decision they did. Um, but it was tough. I, 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 I did not expect that one at all. That was... That was a rough blow, but yeah, I mean, we are one of the, the, the few left that are standing. And I, I really, I think that we can, that we can bring this project into something, into something great. So I was good a bit. Yeah. Yeah. It's a shame, but nobody expected what happened with strong to happen. Um, but you know, they, I mean, to go to, I think at the peak, it was like $1,200 per token all the way down to, I think it's at what, five something now. Um, it's just insane, man.
Strong is gone. Strong is gone. I, I mean, I, has David Moss even tweeted in the pit? I'm not even sure if the dude's still around. Um, yeah, that was rough. I hope, you know, I always wish for a success for a project. I hope that they can get Strong Chain going and, you know, but I don't know, man. It's kind of a tough situation. Um, you got it, Mia. Um, appreciate you guys tuning in. And, you know, we'll get that uh, that vote going out so we can see when everybody I, I'm liking the Sunday fun day, but we'll just put it out just in case to see if, if there's any strong opposition to it. But what are your thoughts on the edge back test results? Yeah. So um, I did see that they um pretty impressive. It's interesting that they that the results came from 2015. Um, you know, that's it's encouraging in the sense that, you know, it's there's a long, uh, you know, it's a it's a huge data set. So I was actually really impressed with, um, with the model. So I, um, yeah, I know myself and a couple other team members are going to be buying their, you know, their, their NFT bot. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. I mean, 500 bucks is, is really, I mean, considering that for other bot, you know, as a, as a team, we've been, pretty heavily um, involved with different like trading bots and stuff with the treasury. Uh, and, you know, we've been doing incredible so far and, you know, but a lot of them require a monthly fee. So to be able to just pay, you know, a flat 500 bucks and get access to, you know, to that for life, it's pretty, I mean, it's a pretty good deal. So did you guys, um, did you guys get whitelist on that Larry, Ari? I, I for I don't recall if you. Uh... Do you know I can't remember. <laughs> I think I asked for it, but I'm not sure if we got the list over them in time. I know we got the community list over. I don't know if we got the team list over. But... Oh, hey, maybe I don't have a whitelist list, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, no, but I mean, if not, I, I mean, it, 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 I think the price, the launch price, is seven fifty. It's pretty so reasonable, still, to be honest. You know, yeah, it's pretty it reasonable. Is, it is. It's considered. Like, you know, cause it's like some of these bots are like a hundred to, to 200 a month, you know, for the, yeah. as yeah. like their maintenance fee. So, you know, three, four months go by and you've already got your money back. Um, yeah. The NFTs are pretty cool like as well. Money. I like the way they've, uh, I like the artwork. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, um, okay. So there's one last thing that I would like to announce before we kind of close this out. Um, and we're going to make an announcement about it as well. So we are going to be pulling liquidity with, um, in, you know, in, in preparation for the launch on the new decks. So, um, you know, we're going to be putting out an, an announcement as soon as it happens, because it's going to look like, you know, a big red candle on the chart, but, um, you know, just want to give everybody the heads up. That's, that's listening that, you know, you, you kind of get the, uh, I'm not going to say the alpha because it, it's not alpha, but just wanted to kind of make everyone aware. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. I'm waiting for the rug comments that are going to be rolling in, but uh, <laughs> if anyone reads the announcement, they'll see what the plan is and, you know, and they'll, you know, they should understand. So, but all right, guys, if anybody, uh, thank you. Thank you for making, uh, making it. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I just, sorry about that. Um, yeah. Yeah. Thanks Larry. Um, <laughs> thank you all for, for tuning in. I appreciate all the questions and, um, we will have this uploaded to YouTube right after the AMA. Um, and I'm looking forward to the future of the project and also for the future updates that we will be scheduling for the, uh, the coin term Sunday fun day. I feel like that just kind of has to happen now. So, Thank you guys for tuning in um, and we will speak soon. Take it easy.